uh, give a demonstration of why we see a total solar eclipses. So I'm going to start with a model like this. And so when we went to elementary school, a lot of us had uh, demonstrations like this in our classroom. Mm -hmm. Or you have these in your uh, books, your science books. So let's just start with the simple science. The sun goes, or the moon, excuse me, the earth. <laughs> the earth goes, goes around, around the sun. The sun. It takes three already lost me now. 65 <laughs> days and a quarter to do that, okay? Then we also know that the moon at the same time travels around the earth. It takes 27.3 days to do that. So both of these things happen at the same time. So my question, For what's the problem with it? If this were the actual perfect model, why do we not get a total solar eclipse every month? We the should. The degree. Yes. The moon. Do you see the moon, how it goes perfectly around the Earth? That is not. I believe it needs to be on a 5% tilt. Five, yes, 5 degree tilt. And see, my, the problem for me during the 8 o'clock hour, yep. I was on a 6 degree tilt. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you. So this is what our textbooks show. It shows the Earth. Excuse me. God, why can't I get this right? It shows the moon <laughs> traveling around the Earth in a perfect line. If that happens we would get a solar eclipse every month. But that's not what happens. What happens is that the moon is tilted five degrees. And so because of that five degree tilt, it becomes incredibly rare now to get a total solar eclipse. So again, if we had a straight path of the moon uh, going through, we would have that eclipse every month. But what we have is a five degree tilt. And so this is what it looks like. Uh, going through. So because of this five degree tilt, we get on average a total solar eclipse once every 18 months somewhere on the planet Earth. It's not always the same place because the Earth is also turning around at the same time. So let me show you this. And I think this is what's really incredible. The way our universe is created is that the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but the sun is 400 times farther away from the moon. So when this happens, the moon and the sun appear the exact same size. So the moon blocks out all the light, completely covers the disk of the sun, and that's how you get a total solar eclipse. What's rare about this is that the, first, the last time Texas, the state of Texas, got a total solar eclipse, you have to go back all the way to 1878. The next great American eclipse is going to be in 2045. Zach was just mentioning the one in 2044. That one barely hits the northern United States. And so that's not very much at all uh, for us to see the total solar eclipse. 2045 is the one that goes all the way from the west coast to the east coast. So where you live, if you're watching this, if you, on your spot where you live, you have an average of one total solar eclipse once every 375 years. Just incredible. We're going to be talking much more about this uh, because we're just a, a little more than a month away from the total solar eclipse. I'm going to end with this. First of all, to see the total solar eclipse, you have to be in this path. This is the path of totality. It's the red lines. The middle path of totality is the blue line. And so I'll be in Fredericksburg on April 8th. That's right in the middle line. Um, but the coloring here is important. The blue color, that's your best probability to have clear skies. You have anywhere from a 10 to 30% chance of cloud cover on average for that day in April, April 8th. But you look at the northern United States, that is an 80 to 90% chance that you're going to have cloud cover. And you do not want cloud cover because all that happens is that the skies get a little dark. You do not see a thing. The best place to see this total solar eclipse is right here in the state of Texas, the farther west you go.